So hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. I thought that since we finished The Walking Dead, it'd be fun to look back on some of our favorite... Why am I referring to myself in the third person? I thought that since we finished The Walking Dead uh, a month ago, which, yeah, it's been a month already. Can you believe it? I thought it'd be fun to look back on some of my favorite moments, some of my favorite highlights, um, favorite group introductions, favorite on-screen deaths, favorite storyline progressions, all that stuff because now we can because we have the whole complete story the walk of dead season 1 to 11 in its beautiful little cocoon of completeness which also i cannot wait for the box set to come out i don't know when it's coming out but you know when a show ends to do the complete like collector's box set where it's season one to the final season i i can't wait so yeah today's just going to be talking about some favorite moments from the show I've said that like three times. Let's just get started. But before we begin, the link to my Patreon is down below where I do a whole bunch of reactions. There's usually about two uploads a day. Sometimes there might be three if it's if it's a month where I've thrown in an extra show. So there's ongoing reactions to old shows and new, the older ones like Buffy, The X-Files, all that fun stuff. And then there's newer shows. Like I think I'm just about to finish up Cabinet's Curiosities. I'm starting up Doom Patrol next week, uh, the new season, season four. I also started reactions for The Santa Claus, the TV show, which... I wish somebody, <laughs> I wish somebody, anybody would have taught me. Don't, don't subject yourself to that. Don't do it, but I did. And like, you know, we're in it now. So those are ongoing at the moment. There's also reactions to Doctor Who, Cobra Kai, stuff like that. And this week, because it's Christmas week, or it's Christmas weekend, I suppose, because Christmas is on a Sunday. Uh, I'm doing some festive movies. So there's a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special reaction. There's a Jack Frost reaction. A Die Hard 2 reaction, which, yes, that's a Christmas movie. And an Elf reaction going up over the next couple of days. Usually over on Patreon when I have a, a holiday or season or whatever coming up, we do like special movie reactions to make it fun and festive. And yeah, I just have to point this out because it will drive me nuts if I don't. The inside of my left wrist is smeared with hair dye because I had to do a sensitivity test a few days ago before I dyed my hair dark black and yeah I can't get it off <laughs> it's stained okay so that is what that huge ass mark is it annoyed editing me so we're pointing it out I have seen Elf and I have seen Jack Frost of course so those are just more commentary you know looking back down memory lane remembering being a kid watching these movies with wonder but I'd never seen Die Hard 2 or the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special so yeah, the link to that's down below if you want to check that out. Anyway, let's go with The Walking Dead. I still can't believe it's over and it still doesn't feel like it's over because there's spin-offs. So it's like, it's it's weird to think, yeah, there's going to be no more. But at the same time, it feels okay because we're still going to have Negan and Maggie, Rick and Michonne and Daryl confirmed. There might be other people popping up here and there through the spin-offs, which I do think is probably going to happen. We'll get to that point in a while or maybe we can just start off with that point. Yeah, so we'll start with that point. So listen, I like how they ended the show quite open-ended. And we got we got everything wrapped up. We got all of our goodbyes and all of our who ended up where's out of the way. But at the same time, we kind of didn't. <laughs> the only person that we know is not going to pop up anywhere is poor Rosita. Because she didn't make it out of the show. So in a way, I do, I do like that the possibility for anybody to turn up in the spin-offs is there. But at the same time, I don't like that either because then it doesn't really feel like a cohesive close to the show. I mean, we saw, like, you know, Zeke and Mercer ended up as, <clears throat> like, co-rulers. We saw everybody in their little groups all happy. Everybody was settled. But how long is that going to last for? Are they going to pop up in other shows? I don't think anyone's popping up in Daryl's show. My man is shagging off to France. You'd have to travel <laughs> for a hot second to get to him to just accidentally appear in his spinoff. So I don't know about him unless he decides to come back. But the Negan and Maggie show takes place in New York. Which I guess is possible for people to make the trek from wherever the fuck they're at to New York. So I do like that they left it open-ended. But at the same time, no I do. Do I? Yes. We're... That's that on that point. <laughs> okay, so getting into some of my favourites. My favourite episodes from over the seasons. It's it's funny because it still hasn't changed. I really did. I, th I thought it would change. It hasn't. Since the second I saw it, still has been my favourite episode. Anytime I bring that up in a video, people either jump down my throat and they're like, oh my god, you don't appreciate television if that's your favourite episode. And then on the flip side, I have 
you know, all three of you who agree with me and are like, oh my God, yes, I love that episode. But I don't, since the first time I ever saw that, it's been my favourite. I, I didn't choose it, it chose me. Everything about it from the dialogue to the fact that at that point, Daryl and Beth were two polar opposite characters. They should not have worked well together. It shouldn't have flowed as well as it did and it didn't for a while. You saw how awkward they were with each other at the start of the episode, how he didn't get her, she didn't get him. And then at the end, there's just this moment of understanding, this moment of, okay, both of us are just lost little chickens looking for what way we should be cluck clucking down the road. You know, they just, they just get each other and seeing her seeing Beth struggle with everything from the younger person's point of view, from a younger person's eyes, viewpoint, whatever way you want to phrase it. I just, I loved it. I loved it so much. And Daryl's my favourite character. So any episode that we get that's centred around him, I'm like, after still, the season six finale and season seven premiere, I always group them together as one episode because they kind of run on from each other. I know that's probably like a hot take and I don't really understand why, but that to me was my, one of my absolute favourite moments in TV history, not just Walking Dead history, in television. I remember when the goddamn credits started rolling on the season six finale and I thought there ain't no way, there ain't no way they're going to make us wait. And then they did. I will never forget the buzz and excitement that surrounded the week after that episode aired and the lead up to season seven's premiere. Everybody was talking about it. People that didn't watch the show were talking about it. There was people taking bets on who was going to be Lucille. It was fucking nuts. So yeah, that's probably one of my favourite moments in Walking Dead history. It was one of, in my opinion, it was one of the most well-crafted episodes as well and well-paced. I mean, even down to the premiere, they kept you guessing. They didn't get right back and show you straight away. It was like they, they kept leading you on. You know, the tension, the build-up, everything about it was just course looking back on it now yeah it sucks to watch and I hate watching Glenn and Abe leave the show I hate watching how they left the show but just everything about the vibe to those two episodes I thought it was fantastically done uh yeah but I always do bring that up too that that pisses me off every time you bring up I love the um the Lucille scene the, it's the season six finale and season seven premiere but everyone just reduces it down to the Lucille scene what pisses me off about that is that everybody forgets Abraham. Every single time you bring up that scene, it's like, oh, no, because Glenn died and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Abe was also boinked on the head. But people always leave him out of that. And I think his little goodbye to Sasha was fucking heartbreaking. And then just to add two episodes on, because, you know, I said this was my favourite episode. This is the favourite episode section, and already I've mentioned three episodes, but it's me. I'm indecisive. Rick's last episode and the last ever episode of The Walking Dead. They they have to be in there. They have to be in my list of favourite episodes. Listen, Rick's last episode. And yeah, again, I have said it before that I don't particularly like that we knew that he was going to leave before he did. But if they hadn't have announced that, everybody would have gone into the next episode like, where's Rick? Are we going to find out where Rick is? So they just jumped the gun. They were ahead of everyone else. They were like, no, he's not. This is it. This is it for him. Don't be asking us where he is. Even though we've continued to do so every day since that episode aired. <laughs> yeah, and everything about that bridge scene. Oh, I still to this day, even more so than the Pike scene, even more so than the Lucille scene. I think the acting that we got surrounding the bridge bro blowing up and his departure is the best we have ever had on the show. Michonne broke hearts all over the world when we see her just absolutely lose it when she thought he was dead. Holy shit. What an episode. Incredible acting. And then more recently, obviously, the finale finale. I just, I loved it. I thought the pacing, oh, the pacing, the visuals, the music choice, everything. I, it was, it was beautiful and it was a beautiful end to the show and they didn't fuck it up. They didn't trample all over the show. It was just a really nice ending, which I did not think we'd get. And for a long time, I didn't want. I remember I always, when I was younger, when I started the show, so I would have been, what, 19? I wanted to see everything end in a fire and destruction and I was like everyone dies that's how it has to end but that would have been so kick you in the crotch disappointing if it had played out that way there's always a part of you that, that wants the anarchy or at least there is with me but I'm glad they didn't do that I'm glad they didn't shag it all up and they gave us that clean ending my favorite character is like I have said my favorite character has always been Daryl he's the reason I got obsessed with the show I started the show and was like okay like this is really good Oh, this is something that just tickles my fancy. I liked it. But Daryl, once he got his fucking claws in me, 
that was it. I was like, mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to stick with the show till the bitter end. All right. And it just, it just happened. I think it's because found family is like my favorite trope in a TV show. Yes, in a movie too, but in a show there's more time for it to develop and there's more time for you to grow with it and to gain new people. and It just works better in a show. I, I just, I think from watching him from where he came from, from how he was introduced to the group, to the, the change from the I'm alone wolf, I don't need anyone, to the needing them so bad, to the point that you you adopt your you're dead because he's not. I know he's not. But at the time Daryl thought he was because he searched for him for ages and he didn't turn up. But that you, like, you adopt your dead best friend's kids. You know, you go from being Uncle Daryl to like Dad Daryl. Watching his progression throughout the show was just nuts. And all the weird situations he found himself in. If there was a cult or a new group anywhere in the vicinity, my poor son of a bitch would be sucked into it. He'd be sucked in and he'd be initiated. We saw it with the Reapers. We nearly saw it with the claimed groups. The Savers tried to get their claws into him too. Everyone just wanted a piece of that ass. Um, and I, just, I just think he's such a fascinating character. And the relationships that he developed with other characters were heavier and deeper than most and I know, you know, we, we have to talk about the shipping. Lots of people shipped, shipped him with Connie. Lots of people shipped him with uh, Carol. But those two relationships, no matter what way you look on it, whether it's romantic or platonic, they were gorgeous. His relationship with Rick, gorgeous. His relationship with Orde, Orje, yeah. his relationship with Judith and Orje, fucking divine. Like, and I know there's so many others, but yeah, I have just loved him. I have loved him. I have loved him. And I will always love him. How about that? Carol was always a close second for being a favourite character of mine. Just the, the perseverance... The, pres <laughs> the perseverance that that woman holds in her tiny little body is incredible. Again, the growth from who she was to who she became. They're not even the same fucking characters to who they were when they were introduced. And I love... I love to see it. More recently, though, I have to say, I have loved um, Ezekiel, which... It's not really recent, is it? Motherfucker came in in season seven. Because Zeke has something that not, not many other characters have to the extent that he had it. There was this purity to him. There was this just honest love and respect for wh who he was, what he is, and his community. And that never died out. And he ended up becoming leader with Mercer because like, who else would be better for the job? No one. Mercer is another uh, newer favourite. Well, I guess he's much newer than Zeke. I'm just a sucker for growth. And he... With that whole strong, silent type that just kind of stands there and you're like, okay, man, you don't say much, do you? But then once he does start talking, once he does start opening up, it's like, okay, I think I love you. Holy shit. Ends up helping save the goddamn day. Who'd have thought it? And, my God, does he look good in a suit of armor? Obviously, yeah, I love characters like Rick. I'm blanking on every other character's name. Yes, I love Rick. You know, and Negan and all the big heavy hitter characters, but, yeah... Daryl, Carol, uh, Zeke and Mercer have been some of my favourites. I've also loved Gabe. I think I think every character is just special in their own way. You'll find a reason to love every character. Some of my favourite kills was the Frozen Walkers, which... To this day, the snow, uh, the snow scene and the snow visuals are some of the most stunning that the show gave us. Because it was so weird, it was so different, it was so unlike anything we'd seen before and it was... Oh my god! It, like, it was so beautiful, you can't really see. Just above my finger here, on my bookcase there they released a snow globe the walking dead put out a snow globe and it's of a frozen walker in snow and it was so gorgeous that i was just like i just blacked out and was like bye now and it was shipped to me before i even know knew what i was doing i thought all the frozen walker kills were so unlike anything that we'd seen it wasn't wet and squishy and bloody it was so cold crispy and empty i loved it Obviously the Daryl kill with the chain where he went all ghost rider on the walker's ass in between the two vans and just whoosh, killed a bunch of walkers. Um, the Rick and Michonne kill where they have the wire going between their two cars and they just mow down through that little herd. And then we got to talk about groups. We've had so many groups introduced into the show while it, while it was airing. Duh. I don't mean villains. I just mean little mini groups that joined our bigger one. I'm talking like the Sasha and the Tyrese's, the um, the Magna and the Kellys. You know what I mean? The, the mini groups that went and joined ours. Sasha and Tyrese were one of my favourites. Both of their deaths are up there in some of the most painful to see. Kelly, Connie, Magna, Luke, uh, when their group joined ours, I loved their introduction. I loved the little story 
that Luke gave about the Stradivarius. I just, I thought it was an introduction done well. Granted, my guy did bounce like a few episodes later and wasn't seen again till the finale. And then he got his stomach ripped out his arse. <laughs> but yeah, I, I loved their introduction. I loved the balance, the dynamic they brought with them to our group. How they kind of bled out of their own group into ours. And it just loved it. Absolutely loved it. I guess you could kind of count the farm as a group, right? Because you had the Green family bursting onto the scene. Uh, obviously that gave us Maggie, gave us Herschel. And I love the setting of that too. For a new group or a new little um, set of characters to come along to bring a new set with them. Or to bring a new setting with them. The farm loved it. Loved it. Even though The Farm is not one of my favourite seasons. Season 2 is not one of my favourite seasons, ironically. That's different then though from the villain introductions. If you're talking villain introductions, obviously. Obviously you've got the Governor and Woodbury. You have saviors and saviors compound you've terminus you've uh the reapers there, there's so many the whispers so many mixed in around there i think and yeah again governor i liked and i liked the fact that he came with his own set my guy arrived with his own little setting his little play set but the governor i liked him and he's a fantastic actor but he's probably not one of my favorite introductions to a villain or a villainous group that would have to go to either the saviors or the whispers to this day the whispers just ooh, they're probably unmatched in my eyes their introduction was huge i remember when the trailer dropped for that and you had the was was it a herd walking through a forest or something and you could hear them whispering people lost their fucking minds when that trailer dropped so that was that'll always stand out as one of the coolest intros but then there's everything then that comes with the whispers like the ridiculous moment of Negan and Alpha making out in the middle of a forest. Who would have thought we were going to see that with our two eyeballs? Not me. Stabbed him at two knives and all the fun craziness that came with him. But I keep, I keep going back to the saviors. I don't know. I think that's... I think it's because that was when I really got like obsessed with the show. Season 5 was airing. It was somewhere... Somewhere in the middle of season 5 was airing when I started watching the show. So season 6 and 7 was my first real watch in real time. Keep up with this. So, and because of that, I'm guessing it will always be special to me. That's when I proper got in and watched live and kept up and, and was excited to tune in week after week and could get excited with other people too, you know? So I guess that's why that's always special to me. And the idea of the saver is the fucked up power dynamic and the fucked up planning and falseness that went in to running somewhere like that on Negan's part. And then you have Simon, that mad son of a bitch. I think the theatrics just made him s- s- scarier. I don't want to say because I do think Alpha's probably scarier than him but he was just there was something unhinged and unsettling about him his presence was off-putting and I love that in a character wow that says a lot about me doesn't it Reapers as villains I feel like we didn't get enough time with they could have been they could have really been something but they were like in and out in a heartbeat I was like all right cool I liked what I saw V at least I didn't have time to get sick of you Terminus pretty cool um not cool of course you know their whole mo that's that's not okay but i mean you know their introduction lure people in with the the falsity and the idea of safety and just just, it was just deliciously evil no pun intended when my mom first watched that she was so shocked i remember her coming to me and she was like they fucking eat people they're not there to help anyone at all welcome to the walking dead Touching back on what I kind of talked a little bit about earlier, sets. I am such a visual, I'm a visual bitch. I I love, I love sets. I think that the set and the environment that a scene is in will make it or break it. Doesn't matter how great the dialogue is, the set is so important to me. I think my favourite set probably is the prison. Some of my favourite episodes, some of my favourite moments comes from three and four. I, ju- I love... I- I've said before I love the prison and I don't know why, but I guess I kind of do. I One of my favourite shows growing up was Prison Break. Uh, random, I know. I was like 12 years old, out of my mind, obsessed with this fucking TV show about these two brothers. <laughs> but I loved it. So I think when we got the prison scene and we got the prison, the, the prison setting. I've gone fucking Transylvanian. When we got the prison setting, I really just, I loved it. I loved that we were fighting to get into somewhere where before the fall of society, everybody would have been like, plotting and planning and tattooing the blueprints on their bodies to escape so that turning everything on its head turning the usual rules on their head loved it loved it and just visually i thought it was really fucking cool too 
It's funny, like, I like Alexandria. It's iconic because it's our home, but it was never one of my favourite sets, and I don't know why. I think it's because I have family that live in America, and they, from what I remember, lived somewhere kind of similar. It was like, it was like a housing estate. So when I see Alexandria, I just see, like, my, I don't know, uncle walking outside to put out the trash in a regular ass life. <laughs> I also really like the setting of Saviour's Compound too, I thought that was really cool. Speaking of which, if we're going to talk about that, then we're going to swivel back around and talk about um, music and music in episodes. I've said it before, that music in a show is so fucking important. And I understand why a lot of shows wouldn't want to spend a lot of money on royalties because music can get expensive. But the two standout moments, and I know there's a load others as well, but the two standout moments for me were Arsonist's Lullaby by Hosier and Landslide by Fleetwood Mac. I mean, Hosier is one of my favourite artists. He's Irish. He's fantastic. He's a magical little creature, even though he's like six foot seven. But he's got such a way with words. And he is like a fucking siren when he sings. To this day, I can't believe the motherfucker's Irish. I cannot believe that we produce talent like that. I hope to see him live someday. He's the only person on my list of people that I haven't seen that I want to see. So hopefully someday I'll get to hear his gorgeousness live. But yeah, um, that song... Just it always sticks out to me and every time I hear the humming if I have my music on shuffle and that comes on because I have Hosier in every playlist that I have when that comes on it's like I'm taken back to the first time I saw that episode I'm taken back to the that exact moment and Landslide I just I don't think they could have picked a more perfect song for that scene for what was happening for what what they were gearing up to close out forever you know and the words Oh, the words hit close to home for them, for the characters on screen, for the viewers. I just, I'm someone who I don't like change. And I know a lot of people say that, but I'm a bitch when it comes to it. I don't even like looking back on old photos. Because if I see change, I'm like spiraling. Goodbye, you've lost me for the rest of the day. Time passes. What? So I just think the words to that. About change and growing older. And I'm just like, no, stop. I refuse to believe that I'm not the same person that I was when I started the show six or seven years ago. But it was gorgeous and it's one of those kind of timeless songs too that no matter when you watch this episode in the future, the song will always be perfect. It's not that it was like a trendy in the moment song, it's just it's Fleetwood Mac. It's never going to go out of style. So if we're talking about emotional moments, my favourite emotional moments that we've seen. <sighs> There's been so many. This show has made me cry so many times that... Well, I guess that's why it's my favourite show. If something can get that kind of emotion out of you, it's got to be good. Two things instantly jump out. The end and the uh, Rick's last episode. So, yes, obviously the lineup was really sad. The look at the flowers was heartbreaking and twisted when you think about it. Um, the You're My Brother scene between Rick and Daryl. Gorgeous, divine, just... I love them. Coral's death was really gut-wrenching. But for some reason, the last episode and Rick's last episode stick out to me so vividly. Rick's last episode was just beautifully done. Every Everything about it, I cannot fault that episode. I just, I can't. You know, you have the flashbacks, you have seen all these characters that you hadn't. These, these gorgeous, gorgeous moments that just took the fucking wind out of my lungs. Just sucked it right out of me. And then obviously, like I said earlier, the bridge scene in that as well was just heartbreaking. Watching everybody come to terms in that moment with the fact that he's gone. Oh my god, Rick isn't here anymore. He is no more. He got kidnapped a little bit by a helicopter, but they didn't know that. So just stunning, heartbreaking. I remember like finishing that episode and just being, feeling spent emotionally. And I had the exact same feeling after watching the last episode. I think because we had, we'd had, we had so much time to get used to the idea, right? They announced it like, what, a year or two years ago that they were ending the show. So, like, we knew for a while, okay, it's ending. It's coming to an end, whatever. And then going into the season, we knew this last episode, whatever, 24, it's the last one. And with each passing episode, like, everyone's like, oh, we're getting closer to the end, haha. But we did have time to prepare and build up to it. It wasn't like season 11 ended and then you're blindsided and you're told, actually, that was it. So we had time to get used to it. But there was just something about the last episode, the finality of it, how they had the narration running through the intros for the, the episodes in the lead up to it. The, like I said, the music, the happy scene with everyone sitting down having dinner together, the goodbyes that we got, the closure that we got from it. But what hit me the most was the end, the the very last um, shot. After we see Rick and Michonne come back, which that just made the episode iconic in itself. 
after we had them come back we had the scene where um we're the ones who live and we had everyone saying it we had a bunch of different people being shown on screen all of the people that we've known and lost throughout the show's time but i don't, I don't know what killed me was judith and orje overlooking everything and just her simply saying to him yeah we're the ones who live i remember after i finished filming that day i didn't want to stop and then after I finished filming, I remember just sitting here and being like, look, I know we have the spinoffs. I know we, there's so much other content. But this is it for the main show. And I remember just sitting here and just feeling really fucking sad. And I don't remember ever feeling this particular taste of sadness. Maybe once. I felt it after I finished Supernatural. And out of everything I've seen done over my life regarding media, TV shows, music, bands movie franchises I've never felt this the closest I've come to this particular flavour of sadness was when I finished Supernatural but even at that this was different this was this was heavier so for me that I thought that was a really sad moment and I actually I got the uh, it was a very emotional moment and I got the we're the ones who live tattooed on my arm which I can't fucking show you even if I wanted to editing me will insert a picture just because that that quote got me so much so I decided to get the quote where the ones who live with the little um the lavender little piece of lavender underneath it because RJ and Judith are overlooking a beautiful lavender field and everything is calm and happy. But yeah, like I said, there's been so many emotional moments. Obviously, you have Glenn and Abraham leaving. You have um their actual on-screen deaths. Noah's death is pretty twisted too. The Pike scene was just heartbreaking. We had everyone's head up on them fucking sticks. I think what was sadder about that wasn't the characters who died. It was the characters who were still alive that had to see that. That had to go through the trauma of dealing with that. Like Carol and Ezekiel having to see their fucking kid's head up on a stick. Even like smaller sad emotional moments. Such as like Morgan seeing his wife through the door. Um, when she was trying the door handle way back. Way back it's towards the start of the show. That still stands out as one of the most like ah, moments. You know, or, or when he's trying to gear himself up to shoot her. Again, because it pulls at your human heartstrings. You forget that it's a show for a minute and you're very much put in the what will I do in that situation mindset. So just The show has just been sprinkled with such sadness here and there. <laughs> We're talking about characters and stuff. Like I said, we've had 11 seasons of a show. There's some that I love and that stick out more than others. But growth, this show should be known for the growth the characters have had alone. Because... Like, Gabe. You meet him, he's crying like a little bitch up the tree. Up, up the tree. He's up a rock. He's not a squirrel. He was sitting on a rock. Rock! Damn, I nearly said tree again. And to go from being that Gabriel who closed the doors in the congregation and lived with the guilt of that and then tried to deal with, you know, the horror of what he had done to the Gabriel that actively opened the gates to let everybody else in. Um, storming past Pamela in the last episode and being like, shut the fuck up, we're letting them in. The growth. Same goes for Eugene, being the, you know, scaredy cat that he was when he first entered the show. To, or the love, what struck me was the love that he thought he had for Rosita in the beginning. You know what I mean? That he was like fixated with her or whatever, whatever the fuck was going on. I mean, he was creeping behind bookcases and watching her and Abe go at it like, creeper. But watching him develop from that into... The Eugene that really did absolutely adore her. We saw it in the last scene between the two of them when she was in bed and he was there with her. Who would have thought that he would have been the one out of Abraham's army that would have outlasted everybody? Or you have characters like the Michonnes and the Daryls of the show that when they, you know, popped up on screen were very much lone wolves, very much kind of struggled fitting into people, struggled getting close to people and then ended up being such a cornerstone of our group and our community that you couldn't imagine them any other way. Or you have Carol entering the show with that piece of shit Ed in an abusive relationship, changing into what she became and what, what, what we last saw of her in season 11. It just... I mean, I guess they're lucky in a way because they had 11 seasons to be able to tell these stories. You had the time and the wiggle room to throw in, um, you know, hints at characters here and there and to allow, you know, plant seeds and allow them to grow as the show goes on. But there, there was just some really really incredible moments regarding character growth and regarding characters completely 180ing or like Negan's a perfect example of that too how many times did he 180 and then full you know 360 back into old Negan ways when he had to like when he had to try and infiltrate the whispers we saw him go a little bit twisted again because he had to and then you see him come back from that to the other Negan that he had become 
And it's just like this guy, he is a man of so many masks. How does he have a suitcase big enough to carry them all? Like there's so many couple moments I love too. Rick and Michonne first getting together. Oh my God. They are probably my favorite couple from the show. If not one of my favorite couples from TV, full stop. Glenn and Maggie, obviously, hello. I mean, they're one of the first couples you think about when you think about The Walking Dead, even though Glenn's been dead for like seven seasons. Six seasons, I guess, because he died in season seven. That's four seasons. Can you count, you stupid bitch? No, I can't, is the answer. But then like there's newer couples. Like I thought Luke and, Luke and Jules were really cute. I think um, Magna and Yumiko are so adorable. And that kiss we got of them at the dinner table. When they were just happy that they were both there vibing and alive. I loved Aaron and um, Eric. But you know, Eric got ripped away from him. And then he just didn't really get with anybody. Aaron... I mean, he had Gracie, so Aaron got a happy ending. He got to settle down, but, like, I would have liked to have seen him happy with somebody, you know? And I, I stand by what I said about Daryl. I think it's smart that they didn't necessarily put him explicitly with somebody. They didn't show you him dating someone or building a life with somebody because that would have, that would have created waves of monumental sizes. <laughs> um, I think keeping him somewhat solo was a smart move, uh, especially going into the spin-offs. Lydia and Elijah got together, which I didn't see happening. I thought he was going to die. I thought that Orvi scene where Lydia... Oh, God, that was another heartbreaking moment. That should have gone into my heartbreaking moment moments. When she had to get her arm cut off. They ended up happy together. And I thought, well, you know, he's going to die for sure outside this Orvi. And now she's going to be traumatized forever. And she's going to blame herself. But no, they just got to be together and happy. Mercer and Princess. Jerry and Nabila. Nabila, is that how you pronounce her name? We just got to see so many people be happy and settle down and it was, it's, mm. it's editing me popping by again because of course I forgot stuff. Other honourable mentions include Lydia, my god her character progression from where she entered with the whispers under her mother's thumb, under her mother's rule, watching her go from that scared little kid into the woman that she grew into, the change that she made to not turn out anything like her mom, watching her outgrow that abusive relationship and put it behind her and thrive and have this whole other life that she never thought possible. Jesus was another character I forgot to mention. I adored him and his short-lived time on this show. His death was, it, that has to be up there in most shocking moments because there was, there was a hot second I thought, okay, he's not dead though, but, but he's not dead though, okay? He's fine, right? And then no, he really was not. He was not fine. His intro was one of the funniest introductions. Watching Daryl chase him around a field while Rick drove along behind them. That shit never gets old. One of the more sadder moments as well that slipped my mind as I was recording this would have to be uh, Jackie's death. Jackie uh, from season one where she decides to stay when the CDC blows up. That was just, uh, I don't know, under such a fundamental human level. It was just sad that she'd rather go out that way than live into the apocalypse and see what would become of her life. Laurie's death was another very sad one. Everything about it, the fact that she birthed Judith into this new unknown world and then died and had to be put down by her son. I mean, that's scarring for Coral. That sent him off on a little bit of a spiral. Sad for her, obviously was horrendously heartbreaking for Rick. But it brought this little ass kicker into our world. I mean, we saw Judith in the womb. We saw, I think we saw how she was conceived, if Shane is believed to be the father. Like, we saw her from the day she was born up until the end of the show with her and RJ preparing for this new world. I mean, the two of them could easily go on to become leaders of this new world in their own rights. So watching her progression was amazing. But yeah, Laurie's death, very, very sad. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I said that with zero empathy. It, it was very sad. Another notable introduction in the show would have to be Princess. The way she just bounced onto screen in that pink fluffy coat and the energy that she had. Oh my God. I love that chaotic energy. But watching, again, kind of similar like with Mercer, which I guess is why they're really well suited. She isn't initially who or what you think she is. She's this bubbly, bright, overly talkative, overly in the moment kind of character. And then we, when we have the episode with her in the train car, where we get to learn an awful lot about her backstory, we get to learn a lot about how she views herself in the world. And it, it just it, it changed my opinion and perspective on her completely. 
I just, I adore her. She's such a great character. Bouncing back to notable deaths because I'm bouncing all over the place here. You can't talk about notable deaths without talking about one of the most notable, Sophia. Her death, or her dis, well, her disappearance first and then her death, kicked off pretty much everything. Her stumbling out of that barn, the heartbreak, the the severity of what the world is now. The itch oh my god. Sad and stunning. And there's others I'm missing out on, obviously. I think I forgot to mention the wolves when I was talking about villains. But it is what it is, okay? This video is already too long. But yeah, those are just some of my favourites and some of my standout moments that I can hone in on right about now. It's 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 weird. It's weird to think of a franchise this big outside of the fact... Because when you love something, it feels like yours. Like, this is, this is my favourite show. It feels like my little show that no one knows about. It's my little corner of the world that I can just disappear into and love. But you, for, you forget it's a huge franchise that belongs to millions of people. It's just weird to think of the mother show coming to an end. Because, you know, th like, I refer to it as that because there's spin-offs. Like, you know what I mean? There's so many... I mean, we might be getting a season two of Tales of the Walking Dead, which I hope we do, because the potential to do so much stuff is there. They just need to hone in on it, you know? Uh, Fear the Walking Dead, like I said, Negan and Maggie, Daryl spinoff, and the Rick and Michonne show. That's like five spinoffs right there. So the universe is being kept alive. The potential to do stuff is there, but the main show is over. And it's just weird. It's weird to think of something that has been on air for 11, 12 years is done. And here creeps in my fear of endings. But I will say, I will say, AMC were very clever with what they did. They were so clever with one, announcing the spin-offs, yes, and two, announcing a whole goddamn new universe. If you have not seen Interview with the Vampire, you're missing the fuck out, let me just tell you. That, that shit has taken over my life in ways I cannot begin to explain to you. I have seen it like six times from start to finish straight through. I cannot get enough. I cannot get enough to the point that I had to go and download the audiobooks. I have listened to the full first book, Interview with the Vampire, and I only have 15 hours left of the Vampire Lestat. I'm obsessed. This show has just sunk its teeth into my heart. And it's part of a new universe. There's, um, I think it's called The Witches of Mayfair. It's coming out in January. So they're smart. They're smart opening up this new universe and trying to create this new universe that will suck people in in a similar way to The Walking Dead. Nothing will ever take The Walking Dead's place in my heart, let me just say. But it is really nice. Is really nice to find something new that is on air that I know there's either going to be more seasons of or there's spin-off shows already. We had one season of Interview with the Vampire and already there's the the Mayfair Witches or the Witches of Mayfair, whatever it's being called. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to throw out there that I'm obsessed with that and I'm happy I have something to distract me with. But yeah, those are just some thoughts for this video for today. Some Those are just some thoughts. I say as if I haven't been talking for 44 fucking minutes. No, I forgot to wear my hat. Can we just pretend I've been wearing this all along? <laughs> How do you wear these? I look like I'm going to bed. Okay, well, can we just pretend I've been wearing this all video because I was supposed to because it's gone up around Christmas time. My dumb ass sat it right beside me and forgot to put it on. <sighs> it's stuck in my ears. Maybe it's better I didn't wear it. It's not very comfortable. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to have another video going up maybe sometime next week or the week after where I talk about uh, my experience with the show. So not my favourites or nothing like that, but it'll be like my first reaction versus my most recent reaction, some favourite interviews I've done, um, talking about, you know, different conventions and stuff that I've gone to. It's going to be all my favourite memories regarding the show in one video, basically. But it's Christmas week, so I don't think I'm going to be recording that this week. Maybe not even next, so it might be going up sometime early in the new year. And I mentioned it at the end of my reaction video that I was going to do that. And then, you know, life got crazy and hectic and I didn't, but they will be going up sometime soon. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you guys for all of the love and the support throughout the years, throughout the videos, throughout the reactions. It means It means an awful lot to me. And um, yeah, I'm happy that, look, we still have spinoffs. We still have a lot to look forward to next year, thankfully. Um, and I'm just very grateful and very thankful to any of you guys that have been along for the ride with me. I appreciate it so much. If you've listened to me talk shit for 45 minutes now, thank you. If you're celebrating anything around this time of year, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and I will talk to you all soon.